my first question to all of you, but I'll start with you, Alex. When you were a kid and they asked what you wanted to be when you grew up, I'm guessing you did not say orchestrator. How did you get into this? And what is your elevator speech when someone asks what an orchestrator does? Um, I think I always knew I was destined to, to work in music somehow. Um, when I was young, uh, uh, piano is my main instrument. So my parents and my teachers had visions of me being a concert pianist. And then somewhere along the line, I discovered pop music and, and learned to play jazz. And uh, somewhere along the line, I became interested in arranging and, and orchestrating and um, picking up instruments like the guitar and the bass and drums and, and really looking at how they function within a band. And, um, you know, I, if you had asked me during high school what I wanted to be, I probably would have said, oh, I want to be Billy Joel or I want to be Keith Jarrett or I want to do something like that on a stage. And then... Um, all the while I was doing a lot of theater productions and something about the collaboration of theater, something about that art form really excited me. And even all throughout college, I thought I was going to be a jazz pianist or, 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 uh, or do something, but I didn't realize that theater was something that I was going to uh, uh, have as such a big opportunity for me when I moved to New York. So um, yeah, it's, uh, my, my goals have changed over, uh, over the while, but I'm very happy to be doing what I'm doing now. And for the elevator speech, I guess when people ask what an orchestrator does, I say that's the, uh, the detailed work in making a, a, a song, uh, particularly in theater, uh, uh, come to life, uh, making the decisions about what instruments are being used, uh, when they play, how they play it, do, do they all play at once, do they come in a little bit at a time, and just uh, deciding on the colors that will elevate the song and perhaps tell a story through the music. Harold, since uh, Alex sort of looked over your shoulder in that rom-com thing and, and told me that he really admired your orchestration, why don't you tell us how you got into this and what your definition of orchestrator is? Well, I, I got into this very early. I started studying piano, uh, not by my own wishes. My mother forced me to uh, at uh, age five. I gave a solo concert at my church uh, which seated 2,000, and I had 500 people there. Uh, when I was nine years old, feet could just barely hit the pedals. And so I was kind of forced into this whole idea of being a concert pianist until I realized when I got to Howard University, I said, as an African-American, there are so few. I have to go to Europe, get famous in Europe, and then come back and be accepted here in the United States. So I said, I, I, I really can't do that. And I couldn't pay my rent at the same time. So I started playing in bars, you know, piano bars and so forth. And that actually turned into uh, the interest in pop music and jazz and so forth. And so I left classical music and the whole concept of orchestration uh, until I did Promises, Promises, which was my first Broadway show, I was musical director, and Jonathan Tunick was the orchestrator on it. And uh, Bert heard me play piano for one of my students. I was coaching students. Basically, I was teaching dancers who couldn't sing how to learn two songs that would make them pass auditions. So that they, the musical directors of these shows would think, oh, listen, they're wonderful. They sing and they dance. If you ask them to sing anything else out of those two numbers, it would be a disaster. But, you know, it's, you know, it, it all started with Promises, Promises as musical director. And I didn't like the fact, I said, oh my God, this, I signed a contract with David Merritt for a run of the play. And then I couldn't do anything else. So, you know, I started coming to the theater late and it, it, it just got crazy. And I actually went to court. I left, I quit. And David Merritt took me to the union, he sued me and we won. You know, he, I had the right to leave. and it just developed into a love for theater. And your definition of an orchestrator? Uh, an orchestrator, well, in, in oh, you, I'm sorry, you already said, you said that right at the beginning, duh. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so since you were looking, I'm sorry? Wait, I was gonna say Alex's definition of an orchestrator is just what it is. He, he nailed it on the head and I don't think any of us would say anything different there. The one thing that, I try to do, and it's not trying to separate myself from any other orchestrator, it's because of my love for theater, 
which really started at Howard when I was in the music department, the drama department was in the same building. I played piano and put together a trio for every musical that they did for, for, for four years. So that carried me into, into New York. And the one thing that I think distinguishes me from other orchestrators, and I have to eliminate, you know, Alex from this, because I Alex played piano in a show I did in Philly once, me and Mrs. Jones. And I listened to him play and I said, wow, this guy, and he had a love for theater, he had a sense, I said, this guy is going to go places, he's going to go places, lost all contact with him for all of these years. And when I saw him, you know, I, I couldn't even remember the guy's name in Philly, but when I saw the face, I said, that's that kid that was going <laughs> kind of in Philly. Wow, look, you know, look what he has become. I'm so proud of, proud of you, Alex, really, really I am. But, Thank you so much, Al. That means a lot coming from you. Thank you. That's great. <laughs> okay, so let's move to Jonathan Tunick since he orchestrated Promises, Promises that you got your start in. Jonathan. You want to tell us how you got into this biz and what your definition of the orchestrator is? First, I'm remembering many hilarious times in Washington with Harold. <laughs> <laughs> and so is he. <clears throat> um, I was a middle class kid from New York. And like most middle class kids, we were given music lessons. Um, I had an uncle who was an amateur clarinet player. And he made my parents a, a deal they couldn't refuse, um, a free horn. So I took clarinet lessons. During the course of all this, when I was about, uh, about eight years old, um, we had music class at school. And our teacher would play us records like Tubby the Tuba and the Nutcracker Suite and Peter and the Wolf. And I started to get the idea that musical instruments could tell stories and play characters. And by the way, um, at one of these sessions, our teacher played us the Nutcracker Suite and asked if anybody knew who wrote the Nutcracker Suite. And one little girl who was very culturally advanced piped up the Tchaikovsky. I had never heard of Tchaikovsky. I'd never even heard a name like Tchaikovsky. I thought she said Jack Husky, <laughs> you, know, you know, like the guy who wrote books about dogs in the North. <laughs> um, we were then played the Nutcracker Suite as performed by Spike Jones and his city slickers. The teacher asked for hands who liked the original by Tchaikovsky and who liked Spike Jones. Well, I was an eight-year-old kid. It was, this was a no-brainer. My hand <laughs> flew up for the for the master, Spike Jones. And I looked around the room to see I was the only one in the room. Um, everybody else knew what was politically correct and gave the right answer. Um, I've subsequently learned that for every question, there is a right answer and a true answer. I had given the true answer. Um, also, I, even more ironically, I'm the only person in that class that became a musician. And in 25 words or less, before we go to Larry, your definition of an orchestrator. I'm going to go clinical on you with this one, which is a panel discussion classic. The difference between an arranger and an orchestrator. An arranger, and I got this from ASCAP, by the way, an arranger adapts, amends, or modifies an existing musical work. An orchestrator arranges a musical work for orchestra. Therefore, all arrangers are by definition, sorry, all orchestrators are by definition arrangers, but not all arrangers are orchestrators. Okay, Larry. Are you the lone arranger? Would you like to tell us how, what your definition of an orchestrator is and how you got into the biz? Uh, okay. Uh, I also played piano from a very early age. Uh, that was my choice though. I started playing by ear as opposed to, you know, being forced into it like poor Harold. Um, and uh, by the time I was in high school, I, I knew I wanted to go into music, but I, I thought, either 
classical composing or if I were lucky enough to get work on Broadway. Those were the two things. And uh, the first chance I, the first professional chance I got was for playing for theater was summer stock. And very shortly after that, I got to sub in the, in Pippin in uh, 1974. Uh, so I, I, knowing how hard everyone says the music business is, I figured if I got any foothold into it, I would just pursue that. And I have gone to the classical end of things a couple of times, but mostly I found my, my home in recordings and commercials and, and a lot of theater. Uh, definition of an orchestrator. I, I'm going to put it a little differently. Uh, in, I think most people have a concept of arranging, it, which is just what Jonathan was saying, where you adapt an existing piece of music. Uh, the orchestration is the final step of the arrangement. And sometimes we're given a sketch that leads us mostly to where we want to go and we have to do the what what I would call the pure orchestration which is just to assign the the lines and the harmonies to instruments but there's always overlap even when I get an excellent sketch by one of our arrangers and m more often when I get um, an okay sketch that has some good ideas but has to be fleshed out um, then then I finish what's given to me and I just have I'll just pull a piece of paper but here's what what I think we we assume that people know, but not everyone does. So I'll just say that the regardless of what someone before us has arranged, maybe they've figured out that it will be a jazz feel and that it'll go into double time and then it'll slow down and then go up a half step. Besides all that, the end result is that you have to have a document that might be many pages long and it has the part for every instrument in the orchestra. And that's an orchestration. 